So at that point, uh, you were working in the high, highly profitable at the mo- at this moment, the the stackest roster in the history of pro wrestling. You had guys like Randy Savage, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan. Uh, there were all of the people there were main eventers, Ted DiBiase, Evan Virgil, uh, among many, many others. Uh, how do you manage to work with this high quality roster? And at that point, do you had any problems with the talent ego problems regarding the bookings and the creative decisions? Yes. I mean, that's always the case in WCW and WWE. It was much the same. Um, I think anytime you're dealing with top level talent, particularly when you have a lot of top level talent on the roster, like we did, you know, we had Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Sting, Lex Luger, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, Ultimate Warrior, as you mentioned, uh, Bill Goldberg certainly became, you know, a top level star during that period of time. So we had not just one or two major stars, we had 10 or 12 major stars. Uh, And when you have that much talent and that much star power along with it comes ego and difficulty working with them. But that was just, uh, that was the price I had to pay. Pausa. Eric Bishop siempre eh, dice que cuando hay talentos A más o talentos máximos, todos en una sola empresa, muchas cabezas, eh, no suele terminar bien. Y es cuando vienen los problemas de ego. Menciones que tenían sobre dos estrellas. Juntas, tenías a Hulk Hogan, a Roddy, Roddy Piper, tenías por ahí a Ted DiBiase. Había tanta gente juntas con Hulk Kevin Nash que en algún momento dado sí hubo problemas de Ego Backstage, sí hubo problemas con los talentos. Y pues al tener esas dos estrellas, pues fue el precio que tuvieron que pagar eh, de trabajar con tanta estrella, ese problema de Ego que se desarrolló. Y nada, dice que fue el precio que tuvieron que pagar en WCW por 